Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm going to go ahead and wait just a couple of seconds to allow um, attendees to filter in. Um, as, and as I always like to say, please go ahead and enjoy the, the title slide here um, and uh, kind of get you excited about the talk that we're about to have today. Um, Cynthia, hi. Hello, how are you? Hello, I'm doing well. How about you, Jenna? I'm doing good. I'm excited. I I um I want to share with you guys that um so Cynthia approached us. Uh, we were able to reconnect with her at uh one of our beach cabanas. Um and it's one of our initiatives where we um are going out into the community and um and and reaching out and and meeting people where they are. And so um we love we always love if you see us out there in the communities, please stop by, give us a shout. Um and uh thank you so much, Cynthia, for stopping by our 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 peach cabana and saying hey to us. And um we get to get to do this now. <laughs> yes, I got a bunch of goodies while I was there. <laughs> pom pom thing and a little license plate. Uh, it says CSU will be alumni on it, so it's cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, just kind of start doing uh, the welcome. Welcome, everybody. My name is Jenna Quinn, and it is my pleasure as the Assistant Director of Alumni Engagement to welcome you all to this uh, edition of the 49er Industry Chat. Um, before we start, I have a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, we just want to inform everyone that this session is being recorded. And so what that means for you is that it's going to be available on our website at www.csulb.edu slash alumni uh, for you to view and for you to share with anyone you think might be um, interested. Um, and so since this is a webinar format, for those of you who are joining us live today, um, go ahead and feel free to use that Q&A box to submit any questions that you have for um, our guest speaker. You know, whenever they pop into your head, go ahead and pop them into the Q&A. Um, and so with that, I'm happy to welcome again our guest speaker, uh, Cynthia Lujan. Luz Sorry, <laughs> Cynthia Lujan. Uh, I'm <laughs> gonna kill myself. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so hi, Cynthia. Hello, hi everyone. My name is Cynthia Luhan. Um, I'm an artist and excited to meet with y'all today. I'm just going to go ahead and read your bio really quick. Uh, Cynthia is an artist working regionally in Southern California, creating murals, paintings, and photographs. She is an inclusivity, mobility, and safety advocate creating artwork that addresses accessibility and the way people navigate public and social spaces. Uh, she completed her BFA in drawing and painting with a minor in Russian studies from CSULB and recently received a certificate in arts management from the Paul Mirage School of Business at UCI. Uh, she learned the value of, uh, she learned the value in uh, interdisciplinary exchange while studying at CSULB through study abroad programs in both China and Russia, and received the Romance German Russian Languages and Literatures Award, Russian uh, Startalk National Security Language Initiative Scholarship, and the Linda A. Day Endowed Student Award to support those experiences. Uh, she's committed to arts and culture, she's a committed arts and culture leader who not only creates community mural projects but demonstrates a collaborative history of work in the arts and culture sector. As a member of FA4 Collective, a placemaking committee member for the Downtown Long Beach Alliance, founder and curatorial director at Flatline Gallery in North Long Beach, public art director at the Arts Council for Long Beach, leadership committee member for Santa Ana Active Streets, and a fine arts educator to older adults for cities and nonprofits in both the OC and LA County. Uh, so that is quite, quite a bio and we are so excited, Cynthia. Um, yeah, uh, so just really to start off, um, uh, can we just have a little bit of background about you? I mean, what brought you here to CSULB? Um, 
yeah, what brought you here to CSU? Yeah. yeah, so um, I went to high school in Santa Fe Springs at Santa Fe High, um, and all of my teachers there were actually CSULB alumni. Um, they all went to through the arts education department at Cal State Long Beach, and uh, I don't know, I just felt right to to go to school there. Um, I applied there and I applied to SF State, got into both and decided to stay here locally. Um, and I am so happy that I made that decision. I love Cal State Long Beach, uh, love the city of Long Beach and um, yeah, the community is uh, unmatched, I think. So, yeah. Very cool. And when you were here at CSULB, you know, what, what was your student experience like? Were you um, a part of clubs? Did you, you know, what types of activities did you do? Were there any classes or professors that really stood out to you? Yeah. Um, so originally I was a photography major um, in the fine arts pr program. Um, and I really loved it. Um, I wanted to get a bachelor's, a minor, and a certificate while I was there, but, you know, it was impacted at the time, and so I think now they offer art minors, but while I was there, um, it wasn't a possibility, so I ended up shifting to drawing and painting so I could take more classes because I loved school, and um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to leave. I you know, went in straight from high school in 2008 and graduated in 2015. Um, <laughs> you know, I've, I've loved it there. Um, I was a part of the Russian club at the time. I'm not sure if that's still active. Um, the drawing and painting club, uh, the photography club. Um, and yeah, I mean, so many professors uh, were such a huge influence in, um, you know, guiding me throughout my college career. Um, a lot of them have either started to retire or have retired. Um, so the program, you know, has changed a lot since then. Um, this Saturday, or sorry, this Sunday coming up is um, the opening for the BFA program for drawing and painting. So I plan to attend that event at the school. Um, so I'm excited and look forward to seeing familiar faces there. So yeah. Awesome. Well, this is our industry chat, and I know that you have prepared for us um, a, a presentation about you and, and your career and your field. And so I'd love to just, you know, give you that time so that way uh, you, can, you can go ahead and share that with us. Great. Um, so let me go ahead and share a screen. And... All right, can y'all see that? Yeah, it looks good to me. Okay, great. Um, so, hi everyone again. Um, my name is Cynthia Luhan. Today I'll be speaking about artists and community, um, talking a little bit about my own public projects um, in community and also uh, talking about alternative spaces. And um, I'll be listing off a few organizations um, of resources that I, I highly recommend looking into um, in case, you know, it's something that you might not be aware of, like different resources for artists specifically. Um, so just wanted to, uh, you know, show a little bit of my work. Um, you can also see some in my background. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I'm an artist who was raised by migrants in current day Norwalk, California. Um, my dad was from El Paso, Texas. Uh, my mom's from Guatemala. And um, currently I practice my art, artist practice out of Santa Ana, California. Um, and I live in unincorporated LA. Um, you know, uh, uh, my daily commutes and travels abroad really influenced my public art practice and my um, artistic, pra artistic practice. Um, and this is actually um, one of the paintings that I created during Cal State Long Beach, um, during one of the final exhibitions that I had on the campus. Um, so I wanted to share that. And, um, you know, I consider myself a muralist, painter, and photographer. Um, I am, I, uh, like Jenna mentioned, received my Bachelor of Fine Arts in drawing and painting from Cal State Long Beach um, with a minor in Russian studies. So I learned Russian while I was there. Um, uh, it was just a 
culture that I was interested in learning more about. And luckily they offered the minor. So I was like, why not? Let's try this. So um, yeah. And throughout my studies at Cal State Long Beach, you know, I was able to meet people from all over the world. Um, I ended up studying abroad at, uh, in China at Tianjin Academy of Fine Arts through an exchange program. Um, I also um, met up with my friend who I was a Cal State Long Beach alumni in Japan and um, did an artist residency there. Um, and currently, you know, um, I am a leadership committee member for Santa Ana Active Streets um, and director of public art at Arts Council for Long Beach and um, do this work alongside uh, my artistic practice. And um, previously, uh, I founded, directed, and curated at Flatline Art Gallery in North Long Beach. Um, I consider myself an inclusivity, mobility, and safety advocate. Um, and, you know, I just want to talk a little bit about, you know, how I got here. Um, this is a picture of me, actually, uh, in Japan when I went to visit my friend, who's, again, a Cal State Long Beach alumni as well. Um, currently, she's uh, working in Berlin, Germany. Um, so, you know, I still try to keep in contact with her and other CSULB alumni. Um, I wanted to show this image, uh, the commute from Norwalk to Cal State Long Beach for the seven years that I went was, you know, influential <laughs> in my artistic practice. Um, I'm showing this uh, meme format photo of like what the freeway looked in 2009 versus what it looked like in 2019. There's no difference in this image. Um, so, you know, the construction, the traffic and navigating space, all of that was actually something that influenced my work. Um, and I do a lot of research in public spaces of like symbols of traffic signs, um, traffic cones, uh, what is accessible to people, what is not accessible to people. Um, so this is all different. Um, you know, metaphors, motifs, and lexicon that kind of informs my artistic practice. Um, Jenna mentioned actually um, the way we met was at uh, Beach Streets, uh, an annual event that the city of Long Beach puts on. Um, I had an installation there, which is behind me um, in this image. And um, these are the construction barriers that I had shown and displayed there at um, one of the intersections that was closed down to the public. So. Um, I do a lot of photography as like research purposes, but also just to archive the different types of materials that we use to communicate with each other in public space um, and create work from that, uh, including photography. Um, and uh, here's actually one, of, one artwork that's created from an aluminum sheet and astroturf, um, kind of replicating the silhouette of a traffic cone. Um, and another painting that kind of replicates signs of pedestrian crossings uh, in public space. Um, I'm not sure if y'all are aware or knew, but um, interesting fact is when you go to hit the button when you cross the street, it's actually called a beg button. Um, it's referred to that in like urban planning, which, you know, it's kind of like begging to cross the street, which is an interesting term. Um, and yeah, I, I definitely um, try to advocate for uh, pedestrians and people of, uh, and people of varying mobilities um, that travel through space other than just motorists. Um, I myself am an avid motorist. I commute a lot throughout uh, Southern California, but I see the value and the importance of advocating for safer streets. Um, and so that's something that is really important to me in my practice. I'm actually um, exhibiting in Santa Ana uh, this upcoming month in December. Um, I'll be there Friday, December 2nd uh, at the Gallery in downtown Santa Ana at the Centaur Arts Building. So let me know if y'all have questions about that later. Um, but I did want to share um, this photograph of a recent event that Santa Ana Active Streets put on um, where they had Beatonito, um, a luchador 
who helps people cross the street, um, kind of an activation in public space. Um, some of those signs are actually signs that we created at my art studio with the pro program director and um, program coordinator. Uh, so, you know, I also volunteered at this event. Um, and I wanted to give a shout out to the Bicycle, which is an organization that Santa Ana Active Streets also collaborates with. Um, I got my bike there, which that's me on the left side with the orange vest. Um, I hadn't ridden a bike probably since I was like seven, ten. So um, recently, maybe in the last two years, I finally got up on a bike again. And I'm really excited and have been doing that pretty often. Um, this is a flyer on the left side that I created for um, a summer bike ride a couple of years ago. Um, and yeah, it's just been really beautiful to find a community that is, you know, practices belonging and um, inclusive practices and just wants to have fun while being in public spaces. And um, I'm really grateful to be working with them and just being in community with them. Um, another organization I wanted to point out was Pedestrian Dignity. Um, they have a lot of great videos of like uh, assess walk assessments or space assessments of how a space can be safe or not safe and um, just kind of questioning that. But um, yeah, I, I uh, wanted to go over a little bit more in detail of public projects that I've been a part of. Um, and uh, this is something that upon graduating from Cal State Long Beach, maybe a year after, um, I was invited to participate in public art project in Bixby Knolls um, through the first Friday's uh, event. Um, so this is called the Allery. It's kind of a gallery inside of an alley. And um, it was an outdoor um, exhibition space for these four four by eight foot panels. Um, it's something I was commissioned to do. So I was paid to do this project. Here's some slides from those um, artworks that were installed. Again, still kind of utilizing this is the beginning of my work, so um, quite a few years ago now. But um, this is another project um, that I was uh, also invited to participate in um, called Worldwide Walls, formerly known as Palo Long Beach. Um, it's located in the downtown Long Beach parking structure um, off of Third Street, and uh, it's called Get Home Safe. So this project was um, created in 2019 and um, had a lot of amazing volunteers. Um, and there was actually construction that happened through the wall. So part of the wall ended up getting, uh, <laughs> you know, demolished and part of it was built up again. And so, um, yeah, the murals definitely continue to change, but, you know, it transforms uh, the, the spaces a lot. Um, this is one of the reasons why, you know, um, we're invited as artists to collaborate in public space is to transform spaces and kind of re-envision them. Um, this is a project that was in collaboration with the Downtown Long Beach Alliance um, called for International Parking Day, which uh, transforms a parklet into a parking a park. And um, you know, it's just to re-envision what um, public space can look like. So uh, I was invited along with um, several other artists to create a uh, parklet. So kind of um, everybody kind of like resting in that space. And um, yeah, the title of the work was called Rest. Um, and here you can see um, that word referenced in uh, four, maybe five different languages since the characters um, I think are both in Chinese and Japanese can be read in both Chinese and Japanese. Um, let's see, um, here's another project that I was invited to do in Pacoima um, at a uh, apartment complex. Um, so this is their basketball court. Um, so again, just kind of the before and after and the transformation of space um, and you know what public art can do. Um, here's a proposal that I submitted for an open call. Um, actually, I was invited to this call uh, by, um, I'm forgetting the name right now, but 
Uh, here's the proposal that I created for utility box and was installed in North Hollywood at one of the metro stations, some before pictures, um, after pictures, and then me working um, out there in the public space. Um, here's another project in Santa Ana with Libro Mobile um, called Mo Mobile or Mobile. Uh, and I recreated these <clears throat> footprints on the floor that kind of made it very playful to interact with the space. Um, originally, they there was no uh, signage on the floor and they created this kind of signage to stop people from parking in that area. But as you can see, people still will continue to park there um, for unloading and loading for events. And yeah, so um, I was invited to create something that was more, uh, it felt more inviting to travel through that space since those signs seemed very like, mm, kind of like don't come here or don't, don't pass through here. And so wanting to kind of make it a little more inviting. Um, uh, through FA4 Collective um, and another Cal State Long Beach alumni, um, we were invited to Cerritos College's um, Far Bazaar art event. This is in 2017. Um, and I was able to create a mural there, but um, you know, it was a really successful event that brought together um, uh, MFA programs, Grad, graduate students and collectives and um, I think some galleries to create temporary installations for um, January 28th and 29th and 2017. Um, so it was just a weekend event and uh, the mural was shortly after demolished because this was a fine arts building that was essentially converted into a temporary um, alternative art space. And I knew, you know, I had the intention of creating the this work with it with knowing that it was going to be demolished and stuff and so um, it was just an interesting project that uh, as a collective we were able to participate in and with that I'm going to be talking a little bit more about alternative spaces so I, I just touched upon um, public projects and uh, as far as alternative spaces so a lot of the times um, this is more like indoors or something that's like a pop-up. Um, here's a mural that I did for um, Architecture Week in Long Beach at um, a studio space in off Anaheim and Daisy in Long Beach. Um, this is a mural that took a few weeks to create and there was an event that happened shortly after. Um, here's some just progress photographs. Um, another form of an alternative space was showing at a library. And um, what I mean by alternative is uh, it's not necessarily a, a formal gallery setting, which is what most fine artists are conditioned to thinking that um, artists, you know, that's like the end goal for someone. Um, so these, you know, showing at um, the library was really interesting. You know, it's already a public space. Um, somewhere where people can come through and, you know, they might be wanting to use the computers or check out books, but um, checking out some art maybe wasn't on their first to do, but it's something that they can come across and interact with. And I think that that's really important. Um, and I love that aspect. Um, I do wanna talk a little bit about FA4 Collective. Um, it, we are, I like to refer to us as an informal alumni association. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, the reason for that is uh, we, the majority of us met at Cal State Long Beach and we, um, we formed during our Cal State Long Beach experience. Um, and four of the things, you know, that we've prioritized over the years is community building, um, exhibiting together, creating projects together and making and forming partnerships. Um, one of the projects, so this was actually installed at, um, the Cerritos College um, building. And this was one of the, one of many projects that um, we were in collaboration meeting. Um, here's another uh, project on the left side, uh, Romina's mural. And um, on the right side, uh, Jeff created a um, collaborative mural project where people were able to paint what they wanted to. Um, Inside, there was more installations, and um, 
uh, we also as a collective have been able to exhibit in various spaces, including downtown LA, um, Angels Gate Cultural Center, and um, in Pomona at AVD Gallery. Um, here's quite a few of the FA4 collective members or, you know, affiliated artists in the sense that um, they've exhibited with us at different uh, exhibitions or have applied to calls with us. Um, and yeah, I think it's just been really important for us to be able to be there for each other and support each other in our artistic practice, whether that be through creating opportunities where we get to exhibit together or, um, you know, have critiques together, give feedback to each other on our work, um, help each other with opportunities, uh, be that, you know, refer ref referrals of some sort, whether that's like, hey, there's this project coming up, I'm not able to take this on but I would refer so and so so they have experience doing xyz and you know that kind of networking is really important um and you know the friendship is really valuable too um so uh for example the Allery um shortly after I created the temporary installation um members from FA4 Collective were able to also propose and install their artworks as well um we also created a resident program um, in collaboration with the Joshua Tree Arts Council. So here are some um, images from there. Um, we raised money to uh, hire a, an artist to conduct a demonstration for us. Um, and we're able to do some landscape painting um, while on the on the residency. So we stayed out there for probably a week or so. We also visited some um, local artist studios in Joshua Tree. And yeah, I think it was uh, creating that um, collective really can help to continue our artistic practice. Um, we were able to continue supporting each other through critiques and exhibitions um, and creating also professional development um, opportunities, whether that was inviting an artist or inviting someone about um, uh, how to do grant writing, um, and in general, you know, just kind of keep, keeping each other accountable and um, continuing to have great work ethic that we learned at Cal State Long Beach. Um, I did also want to touch upon a little bit uh, the curatorial projects that I um, worked on while um, founder, director, and curator at Flatline Art Gallery. Um, so I founded Flatline in 2017, and um, while I was there, I was able to uh, exhibit seven different projects. And um, through the ex exhibits that I was working on, I definitely centered um, Cal State Long Beach alumni, current students, and um, local Long Beach artists. And um, it was really great. We had workshops, um, installations, and uh, traditional like ex exhibits where, you know, there's painting on walls or photographs exhibited on walls. Um, but it was a, an amazing opportunity to gather in community experiences for each other um, in that same spirit that FA4 Collective was created too. Um, so uh, I did want to touch upon a little bit on resources. Um, so uh, I've talked a little bit about public projects um, that mainly has included uh, murals, and uh, I talked a little bit about alternative spaces, so I highly suggest um, reaching out to local art galleries in your city, whether you're still in Long Beach or um, in other places, um, and ask if you can either volunteer there or you know, how you can um, apply to a call if they have any to submit artwork. Um, or, you know, potentially curate an art show there or um, gather some sort of funding to uh, create and curate a art show there. Um, I highly suggest researching residency programs and um, definitely suggest researching grants, both on a local, county, state, and federal level. And um, again, professional development, I think, uh, outside of Cal State Long Beach and outside of, you know, um, academia, there's still so much that you can learn. Um, 
there's so many uh, organizations that offer different professional development. Um, Center for Cultural Innovation has a lot of different educational programs. Um, and these are just some of the resources that I highly advise. Um, so on a federal level, the Nas National Endowment for the Arts. Um, on a state level, California Arts Council. Uh, a county level, um, Los Angeles County Arts and Culture Department. Um, and then more regional um, or uh, Center for Cultural Innovation. They actually work both in like um, the Bay Area and LA County, but, um, and then Arts Council for Long Beach. Um, I'm actually director of public art with them currently. And um, we also, we offer um, a variety of resources, including grants and um, the opportunity to have your artist registry pro um, and to list your events that are upcoming in the city of Long Beach. Um, and yeah, so those are different resources that I highly suggest visiting or um, looking into. And um, on social media, I go by the Sigurados um, and you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And my website is CynthiaLujan.com. Um, so thank you all for listening today. And um, yeah, those are just some, uh, some information on public projects, alternative spaces, and um, resources for artists and community. Awesome. Thank you so much, Cynthia. That was, I loved being able to see some of that art. It was, I mean, truly wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, Thank you. We do have quite a few questions. So if you're up for it, um, let's start with um, what in particular drew you to making accessibility a primary focus of your work? Hmm. I think definitely growing up uh, with a, a parent who was mainly like monolingual um, was one of the big aspects of it, um, of, of trying to make information and space more available. Um, and my experience of traveling abroad to China and not knowing the language and, no, and being in that position of, um, of dissonance where you're like, how do I access people and resources and do daily things and feeling kind of like limited in that ability and recognizing, you know, that there's so many variances of that position of not being, not having agency or not having the ability to, or not being given the ability to um, access things and and so being put in that position really and witnessing it um, really make me more of an advocate to try and, you know, step out of my position and out of my perspective and see how things can be more accessible for people or be made more accessible or even, you know, just try to put myself in someone else's shoes of um, creating um, more inclusive practices, accessible practices, and knowing that we all don't navigate the world the same way, um, and and trying to just be more inclusive of people who navigate the world in a different way. Um, so yeah, just trying to foster belonging. Awesome. <clears throat> yeah, and you know, I I in so much of what you do, right? Like it's you're you're putting I'm speaking a little bit I know what the question is already because I can see it but <laughs> but what struck me is you know like what's behind you right now right like that that's that's a full blown mural on um on a barrier that you would typically see in traffic and your your work takes you to to doing art and and putting art and putting murals on things that you t wouldn't necessarily see it on um, or expect to to run into a mural there, right? Um, and so this, this uh, question came in, um, can you share a little bit more about your process in creating mural artwork? And I'm just struck by, you know, it's not just on a wall, right? It's It's all over the place. Yeah, okay. So I 
I get asked this quite a few, quite a, a lot. Um, so I definitely think uh, making an assessment of where the, the project or artwork will go. Um, so, and for what purpose, whether that's, you know, to, it can be so many different types of purposes, but, you know, for example, um, a utility box is, you know, right in the space, it's not gonna move. Um, the barriers behind me have moved. <laughs> they were in my studio, which is behind me. They were at Beach Streets and now they're actually at the bicycle tree in Santa Ana. Um, I think permanently, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> and um, so for example, that utility box project, uh, there was an area where it was like a one way. And so um, I definitely tried to take both like the driver's perspective, a pedestrian's perspective into account because it's very different the way you um, experience the work. Um, so, you know, making an assessment of what are the vantage points that people get the work from. And then as far as imagery and um, content, uh, usually what's on my mind at the time, but also trying to stay informed of like what, is surrounding that community if it's in public space um and i was you know with for example that um utility box project i was right next to the metro uh orange line i believe in north hollywood um and uh yeah just trying to take that into account um people are definitely walking through there very quickly and um yeah just trying to get content out there that's like a little bit more about like fostering safety um, in that, that space since people are, you know, on the go, bursting out of the, the station and stuff um, on their way somewhere. So yeah, just trying to take the place into account and the community into account. Now you said some of your projects you, you have volunteers for. Um, I think I, I, I remember the, the one in the parking structure, I think is what you were specifically talking about. Well, what's that like yeah. having your art project and working with volunteers? What are their role and how do you manage that? What's that like? Yeah, so um, I, since high school, you know, I worked collaboratively on like murals. Um, so it's not something that's like new. Um, I definitely think making an assessment of like people's interests and skill sets too. Like, do you have previous experience doing this or, um, uh, you know, are you into more like blocking in color or like, like detail work and just kind of making that assessment is definitely important. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's great, um, and it really just depends on the project. Sometimes there's like liability issues where you can't have volunteers, which for example, at Saddleback Art, um, Saddleback College um, in South Orange County, um, I wasn't able to have volunteers help support me with that. So what we did was create um, chevrons on MDF panels that were then uh, placed on the mural itself. So in order for it to be collaborative, um, the students painted on the chevrons and then at I installed that onto my mural and, you know, responded to it. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's ways to like get around it, but um, having help is, is really nice. Um, and uh, sometimes, you know, it's nice to, it really depends on the scale. Like the scale of the project is really what influences whether you need to contract out for help or have a, a call for volunteers and stuff, so. Yeah. Um, another question. Uh, so cool that you have all created your own community with FA4. Any advice for student artists looking to find their own artistic communities? Yeah. Oh, this is something that I meant to say at the beginning of the um, presentation too, is um, if you're a student at, you know, Cal State Long Beach or another school. Um, I definitely suggest thinking of school as like your work. It's not just, you know, oh, like, you know, this isn't just elementary school, middle school, high school. This is like 
you know, it's going to work. And that's how I kind of treated um, going to Cal State Long Beach. And I'm really grateful that I treated it seriously because um, you never know who's going to either be your manager later or you're going to manage or um, who you're, you'll collaborate with. And so, uh, I don't know. I think it's really important to, to, you know, have fun while you're in school and stuff. But at the same time, like as an artist, I think you really just start um, your practice while you're going to school. Um, and uh, as far as like creating community, I think, um, I feel really grateful that the cohort that I was in, um, you know, between like 2012 to 2015, when everybody was like starting to graduate, um, we were all really like uh, helpful towards each other and just wanting to see each other grow. And um, having that camaraderie was really helpful and supportive. And um, it's something that, you know, you can't necessarily just find or come upon. It's just, um, it just is or isn't sometimes, but I do think that, um, you know, me uh, learning more about advocacy and like safer streets, like I was able to search for community in that way too, outside of um, my artistic practice. And that's been really um, generative as well. Um, so I think definitely like not just art as a passion, but, um, you know, other different um, advocacy issues as a passion. So like being able to create community in that way. Um, but I think critiques are always um, really helpful for artists and, um, you know, just sharing out each other's information and um, just sparking that connection, I think is important too. So, yeah. Awesome. Does FA4 continue to stay involved with current CSLB students and recent grads and bringing them in for projects? So um, I think that we haven't done the best job at like recruiting people um, and haven't really, um, you know, uh, it's been more organic. So for example, we put out like an open call and we've had um, Cal State Long Beach students apply to those or um, I tend to always go to the art exhibits on campus. Um, I think they're really amazing and um, the opportunity to do that if you're a student you should definitely take up that opportunity and apply to the shows there um but yeah it's been more organic it hasn't been like okay now who is graduating and <laughs> we have our names and emails and you know we haven't done stuff like that but I def definitely think um we'd like to continue to grow the collective and um uh you know, be able to have more of a like professional development aspect to it um, and sharing resources and continuing to network and um, yeah, just like bringing more visibility to what are the different pathways you can take as an artist um, that aren't just, you're gonna be represented by a gallery and that gallery takes a 50% cut and that kind of thing. So there's other alternatives. Awesome, yeah, I think, there's going to be a lot of people that are interested in that, right? And uh, yeah, um, I know that we're almost at time, but uh, another question that came in was um, any words of wisdom you can share for artists, for young artists uh, from experiencing imposter syndrome to making connections? And I feel like mm -hmm. imposter syndrome has got to be a, a big thing in this industry right like uh, when you're putting yourself out there you know and it's your work so so yeah any words of wisdom yeah well uh I'll share and be vulnerable in saying that I still experience imposter syndrome <laughs> and feel very uh you know I feel like as far as like the last seven years of since graduating, I feel pretty successful in like the projects that I've created, but it still sets in and um, don't sell yourself short. I think uh, if it's really just about being genuine and wanting to connect and then, you know, 
another person will respond to that. Um, and if they don't, then they're not somebody to connect with necessarily. So, you know, I think just um, putting the intention forward and um, being genuine and, um, you know, just knowing that uh, um, it's okay to not be an expert in like all these different things. And um, that's what, you know, that's the point is like, you want to learn and you want to explore and um, share and collaborate. And I think um, that's really more so what's important is wanting to be in community with each other and collaborate with each other or, you know, just share what resources are available or um, volunteer and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that, you know, um, that voice of, <laughs> uh, of imposter syndrome doesn't necessarily go away, <laughs> but, but, you know, you just kind of work with it and hopefully it'll just help to refine your, your voice and artistic practice. And, um, yeah, just don't just afraid to try. Definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Cynthia. Uh, this has been truly a fantastic talk. Um, thank you so much for sharing with us. Um, if uh, folks wanted to get in touch with you or wanted to find out more about you and the work that you're doing, um, you know, kind of build that network out for themselves, um, what's the best way that they could uh, to reach you or, or take a look at what you're doing? Yeah, so um, I think uh, my website, I have a contact form where you can reach out to me. So again, CynthiaLujan.com or um, on Instagram, uh, I go by Desfigurados. Um, but yeah, feel free to reach out either of those ways. Um, and yeah, I look forward to any other questions or um, if someone's seeking advice or seeking to learn more about the resources I mentioned or other resources in addition to that, um, I'm happy to share. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye to everyone here on the chat. Um, Cynthia, if you'll stick around while the folks filter out, thank you also so much for uh, joining us today. Uh, have a great one. Thank you.